We're going to show you the installation of a heat shrinkable 3 core 11 kV XLP joint. Make sure you study the installation instructions supplied in the kit and using table 1 and figure 1 mark out the outer cable jacket. Using a suitable tool, score the outer jacket and remove as shown. Now mark the armor wires, score with a hacksaw and remove. Now bend back the armor wires, ready to fit the armor support ring. Mark out the inner bedding. Remove the fillers to this point. Remove the backing paper from the mastic tape and apply to the inner bedding. This will stop moisture travelling down underneath the armor wires. Lay the copper earth straps onto the copper tape screens, securing with the constant force roll springs supplied. Apply further mastic over the braids and the earth braids will be clamped down at a later stage along with the armour wires. Do this at both sides. Now the joint has a long side and a short side. The long side is for parking the connector insulation tubes 
onto the course. So we're now marking out the short side. We now need to remove the copper tape screen, so the best method of doing this is to fit a roll spring on the core, peel back the copper tape screen to the edge of the roll spring, carefully make a small cut and peel against the edge of the spring. Once we've done that on all three cores, make a mark on the semiconductive layer and this will be our screen point. Apply PVC tape sticky side up so as not to leave any residue onto the core. And the best method of removing the easy strip type semiconductive screen is by using a round file or commonly known as a rat tail file file around the core as shown until you see the white primary insulation beneath. Do not use a sharp knife or a Stanley knife to do this. This is a very, very critical point of the joint or termination. Scoring tools are available with a blade that is set at 0.4 millimeters, so this doesn't score the core beneath. Make three or four tram lines down the length of the core. And this will make it easier to remove. There is no need to use glass to do this. If you've got a bonded semiconductive layer, then there are specialist tools to do this. Again, don't use glass. Now we're fitting a mastic crutch wedge to help prevent moisture that may be existent in the cable. We're now going to fit medium voltage mechanical connectors. The advantage of these is they will suit copper or aluminium conductors and will cover a wide cable range. So mark out the primary insulation to half the length of the connector plus five millimeters. This is a primary insulation removal tool that makes the process of removing the insulation quick and easy. Now score the semiconductive layer over the conductor and remove. It's really important to clean the primary insulation layer Use the tissues provided or a suitable solvent. All carbon traces must be removed from the primary insulation. Now take the yellow stress relieving mastic, apply
apply with a thin edge, stretch and extend onto the primary insulation by 10 millimeters, back onto the semiconductive layer and just catch the copper tape screens to keep them in position. This mastic tape will also provide a moisture seal when the stress control tubes are fitted next. Now position the stress control tubes extending past the yellow mastic and just back from the end of the primary insulation by approximately 5 mm. Utilising a suitable heat source, apply heat all around the tubes until fully recovered. Keep the flame on the move to ensure an even wall thickness. Slide the connector insulation tubes onto the long side of the joint. With this joint we're going to be fitting medium voltage mechanical shear bolt connectors. The advantage of these is that they suit aluminium or copper conductors and will cover a wide range. Please read the installation instructions from the individual manufacturer of the mechanical connector as they may differ. Some connectors may leave voids where the bolts shear. With this type, we supply HV mastic putty tape, which you apply into the voids, filling up to the surface of the connector. Now, take the yellow stress relief tape marked for the connectors, stretch to about half its length filling in the gap between the primary insulation and the connector body. And continue across the body of the connector. It's important to fill in all the gaps and ensure a smooth taper as shown. Any remaining tape can be applied back over the connector body. Now to create additional moisture seals, take the red mastic tape and apply just in from the end of the stress control tubes on both sides of the joint. Now carefully position the dual wall insulation conductive tube so that it covers both screen points.
then again with a suitable heat source, start from the centre of the tubes to one end at a time. Keep the flame on the move. Try to avoid scorching the tubes. And keep going until fully recovered. Now take the copper screening mesh apply it around the copper tape screens and across the joint tubes with 50% overlap. Towards the end of the tubes are shown, wrapped with an open spiral and temporarily secure to the armour wires. Now fit the heavy duty aluminium armour cage. Wrap this tightly around the joint temporarily secure with PVC tape. Use the worm drive clamps to secure the cage to the arms. Now before fitting the outer tube, rough up the cable jacket to provide a good adhesive key for the outer shrink tube. Tape over any sharp points. After fitting the first outer shrink tube, we need to fit the remaining outer shrink tube, but before we do this, apply a turn of grey mastic tape 75mm in from one end. Now position the second and final outer shrink tube as shown. Shrink from the centre to one end at a time until wrinkle free and sealants should be visible at sleeve ends. The joint is now complete.